Second and five. Okay, wants to throw downfield. Got him wide open. Kent just made it to 40. Not going to catch him into 20. Touchdown, Valdosta State. From 75 yards. And not a single piece of yellow handkerchief down there on the field. What a perfect throw from Caden and what a great catch in stride. The David Dean Show. Your weekly look at Valdosta State University Blazer football. Here's your host, Dick Rocky, along with head coach David Dean, for a look at this week's Blazer football action. Hello and welcome to the David Dean Show. I'm Dick Rocky with the head coach. Valdosta State makes the long trip up to Florence, Alabama, but comes home with a 24-21 win over the University of North Alabama coach in front of around 8,000 plus people at the site of the national championship game. Well, it was a great atmosphere, great, uh, great night for football. It was uh, good weather. They had a good crowd, we had a good crowd, and uh, I thought it was two good football teams that, that put on a very good show, very entertaining football game. It was, and uh, boy, it turned out to be an exciting finish, but uh, we're gonna have a great first half to look at here in just a moment, so we'll, we'll be back with the first half highlights in just a moment. Valdosta State University, encouraging, in-depth inquiry, hands-on experience, service and involvement, and a global view, while offering a beautiful residential campus, over 100 fields of study, graduate and online degrees, and championship athletics, all in a warm and friendly community. Get connected and involved. Discover your opportunities. Valdosta State University. Welcome back to the David Dean Show. Coach, uh, coin toss, pleasures win the toss. You decide to defer to start the football game. Well, we had a very strong win at the stadium, and, and we wanted to kick with the win and, and possibly put them on the 25-yard line to start the game, get a three and out, and force them to punt into the win and hopefully get some good field position. And uh, they ended up getting a pretty good punt, but we did get good field position and capitalized on that to start the game. Let's watch the first half. Blazers in the road all white. Nice crowd there for the Blazers. Pit fans there, I know you always like that. Well, I did. It was uh, great to, to come out and see the pet band sitting up there. We had a lot of folks that traveled to the game, which was exciting to see. Our golf team was there. They're playing in a golf tournament up there, and it was exciting to see them behind the bench. And here's the opening kickoff. Jake Walker puts it five yards deep in the end zone, and we come out and do a great job of stopping their run. You see a great play right there. Big hit by Chris Pope, stopping the charge of the quarterback, and uh, we'll do it again. A great job of making some stops here early in the ball game and here's the second play for us offensively we throw a little slant pattern but Gerald Ford he breaks a tackle and outruns a good secondary into the end zone for a touchdown a great way to start four minutes into the game we got a seven to nothing lead we're in two plays and we got a three and out defensively come back out this is what they like to do they like to get their quarterback outside the pocket and, and run some option and we weren't letting him get out wide, and, and that was a big key early in the ball game. They couldn't get their option game out onto the perimeter. We, we kept everything contained in the box. Great tackle right here by Jeremy Grable, stopping the third down conversion. We come out and throw a little naked pass to Trent McGuire here to pick up some positive yards. And then uh, here's a third down play. We almost dropped the snap, but he uh, recovers and throws the ball to Gerald Ford, gets the first down, and then. We start running the ball with Austin Scott and great blocking up front right there. Get some positive yards there on the sweep. And here's a third down conversion on the screen. Sean Tavius does a great job of making some folks miss. And we end up going three plays after that and, and not getting a first down and having a punt. And turn the ball back over to them. And uh, again, doing a great job. Great play right there by, by Ryan Smith on their, their perimeter run game, not letting them get outside. And then, uh, you know, again, we have our, our duo, Austin Scott and Cedric O'Neill. Again, both those guys have outstanding nights. We got ourselves down here in range for a field goal, for a 51-yard field goal. And Daniel put that thing right down the middle, right in the heart. Plenty of distance and turned out to be big points in the ball game. Really proud to see him hit that long field goal there. Again, you can see we got great coverage down the field, good pressure. Had a lot of sacks, a lot of pressures in the ball game and kind of Forced them to go to some, some trickery here. And uh, we do a great job of covering it up on the double reverse pass. They punt the ball back to us, get a great punt. They pin us down inside the 10 yard line and we got to put together a good drive and get the ball off the goal line and, and we did that. 
Uh, we throw here on third down, end up a couple of yards short, have, have to punt. We fake the punt, and uh, right there, Alex has got the first down. If, if he'll just hang on the ball, he tried to pitch it, do a little bit too much, and thank goodness Crocon got on it. Uh, we don't convert, unfortunately. We go three plays after that and end up having to punt and get the ball back to, to North Alabama, but our defense, again, does a great job of stopping them here. You can see the pressure that we that we put on. We got great coverage down the field. Tyler Josie, Lawrence Virgil end up going back there and get the sack. And then Ryan Smith here makes a great play. Good heads up play by their quarterback not to take the sack. He gets rid of the football and they end up getting some positive yards out of it. And, uh, they pump the ball. And here's a great drive right here by, by Austin Scott. This was the Austin Scott offensive line show right here other than this throw to to Gerald Ford. Most everything we had on this drive right here was, was credited to, to Austin Scott and the acceleration that he has. He's very patient and just finds his way through the hole and uses his speed to get down the field. And was really hoping he was going to get in the end zone right here on this run. He, he creased it up the middle and got down to the goal line. And, uh, didn't get in, but uh, Caden ends up sneaking the ball in there to go up 17 to nothing. Like all good football teams, uh, they find a way to get down here and, and have an opportunity to get points. They make a great throw here on the deep slant pattern and uh, push themselves down the field, uh, make a big play right here, getting rid of the football to give them an opportunity to still have an opportunity to kick a field goal. Uh, fortunately for us, it sails a little bit left, and uh, we take a 17 to nothing lead into the half. Coach, you talk about your running backs, over 200 yards between the two of them. Uh, 123 for Cedric, also in 97. He would have gone well past that if you, if you had to play him in the second half. Well, unfortunately, we lost him there on that last drive uh, to an ankle injury, so he did not play any in the second half. I really think that, that he would have had uh, probably 170, 175 yards when it was all said and done. So, unfortunately, hopefully he's going to be Hopefully he's going to be well. I don't know. He, he couldn't go back in the ball game. We sure did miss him. Uh, as you can tell, we, we struggled a little bit offensively when he wasn't in there, but I uh, couldn't be any more proud of Cedric O'Neill, a true freshman stepping up in his absence and making a great play, especially at the end of the game. Coach Blazers go to the locker room with a 17 nothing lead, but things are going to get very exciting in the second half, and we'll be back in just a moment with that. My name is Mesh Wakamati. I play offensive tackle. I'm from Dallas, Georgia, and you're watching the David Dean Show. Welcome back to the David Dean Show. Coach, the Blazers have the 17 to nothing halftime lead. Uh, what's your mindset when you're going with a lead like that versus just the opposite to your football team? Well, we played very well uh, offensively and defensively in the first half, and, and we challenged our guys to go out and play that way again. And, and really, we told them if we play that way, they can't get back in the ball game. And uh, we came out, scored quickly, went up 24 to nothing, had another good drive right after that, and I think we became very lethargic. From, from that point on, we just didn't do fundamentally the things that we need to do to win football games. And uh, like all good football teams, they created some momentum. They got back in the game, and they made a game of it. Let's watch the uh, second half highlights here. Blazers trying to hang on to this lead, and you get that big 24 to nothing lead. Like I say, you just never know some little sparks. Uh, Blazers have, have done it themselves. Teams have done it against us like they did last night. But uh, we were able to hang on here. Well, we were that, you know, they have an outstanding kicker and uh, they do the same thing as us. They put the ball in the end zone and, and we have to down it. And uh, again, Cedric O'Neill was going to have to carry the load for us in the second half with Austin Scott out. He, I thought he did a great job of running the football. And just like the first half, the second play of the second half, we hit Shontavious Jones on a deep route uh, for a touchdown and we go up 24 to nothing very, very quickly in the, in the second half. And uh, we come out, we make a good stop again defensively. Uh, they do put together a, a decent drive, but uh, we end up stopping them down here. They, they get in a position where they can go for a field goal. And I thought Matt Pierce made a great play right here, uh, knocking the ball down there in the end zone. They come in and they try a field goal again. It, it sails wide to the left. And, uh, we, again, we put together a good drive. Again, we have to start on the 20-yard line. A great run here by Cedric O'Neill. Great blocking out wide. Uh, gets about a 30-yard run. Again, pushing the ball down the field, getting good, uh, good, good movement up front. And uh, there was a fourth down con conversion right there that we did not get. Gave them the ball at midfield and 
going back and looking at it now, we probably should have punted that football, but I uh, felt like if we'd have converted that right there, we would have had a good opportunity to, to really put the game away. Uh, we did not get it. Again, great coverage right here by Matt Pierce. They called him for a pass interference. And then here's kind of where we, we go sour. You see everybody stops. They don't stop. A good running back's going to finish off a play, and, and we didn't finish off the play. And from this point on, we just start doing some things that, uh, that we don't normally do. We didn't finish off blocks. We dropped passes. Uh, I think we got very lethargic in the ball game thinking that, uh, that we had this game, had this game won. And we overthrow a ball there for a, which could have been a, a touchdown and end up having to punt the ball back to these guys. And you see those were the tackles that we were making in the first half and we're not making them now. And a lot of that's got to do with, with them and the credit them and, and, and the way that they can make plays. Again, Ryan Smith again with another big sack right there. But uh, again, another, another great play there by Lawrence Virgil. We're getting the pressure on there and stopping them. A good run by Cedric O'Neill again on the sweep there out wide. Great leg drive there. That's a very good linebacker they got. And you still see in the third quarter, we had control of the football game. We were doing some good things. Good throw here on a third down conversion to, uh, to Gerald Ford again. And we convert that third down and then, and then end up having to punt. Got a good punt by Daniel Anderson and pinned them down there inside the 10. And uh, good play right there by Isaiah Gresham. And then here's uh, again where we're, we're just kind of losing ourselves here offensively. We drop a pass right there. We throw the ball behind. We're just not clicking like we were early in the ball game. Big third down conversion for them. Third down and 20 and they convert it. And that really kick-started the momentum for those guys. You see, we're not putting the pressure on those guys like we were. And uh, they end up hitting us with a long pass again. He throws the ball underneath. Their guy comes back and gets it. Tevin Davis makes a good play right here. And I thought we were going to bow up and make a great stop. And then what a great throw and catch right here. Throws the little corner out. He makes a great adjustment, catches the football. And right now, we've got to put something together offensively. We've got to put together a drive. And Again, we do. We put, a, we put together a little one right here with good runs with, with Cedric O'Neill. Uh, we don't get enough and turn the ball back over to these guys. And uh, again, they put together a good drive. They haven't been throwing the football very much this year. And uh, they came out and did an outstanding job and got themselves down there. And all of a sudden, with four minutes left in the game, we're down 24 to 21. And from this point on, Cedric O'Neill and our offensive line took over this football game. And you watch the holes that they created and uh, the way that uh, Cedric O'Neill ran the football right here was starting to break some tackles and getting down the field. He was a big conversion right there that gave us a first down and allowed us to run the clock out. And, and that was great for us to see that offensively to run those last four minutes off that clock to win that football game. Yeah, because they had everything going for them. The crowd really got in. A lot of the crowd left, but those who stayed, it, it got very noisy and exciting. And uh, to your to your credit with your football team, they did respond there at the end of the game. They did. You know, they have a great football team. There's a lot of pride in that program, and I will give them a lot of credit. They fought their way back into the ball game. I think we helped them at some points, but, uh, you know, it was two good football teams going at each other. Fortunately, we made a few more plays early in the ball game and were able to hang on to win. All right, Coach, back in a moment with the uh, Gander Mountain scoreboard. I got my MBA online at VSU. As a working mom who travels on business, I needed an MBA program that fit my schedule and allowed me to balance both my work and home life. VSU's Web MBA was perfect. I was able to spend time with my family in the evenings and then complete my assignments. My MBA is one of my greatest accomplishments. It was hard work, but I would do it again in a heartbeat. Don't wait. Start your MBA today. Welcome back to the Gander Mountain Scoreboard. Coach, uh, we're getting close, probably another week or two, the, the first region rankings will come out, so we're gonna look at some of those scores also. Uh, Miles, 45 to nothing over Kentucky State. Miles is six and one in the Super Region two. And the only loss is to uh, North Alabama, where they went for a two-point conversion to win the ball game, playing great football. Uh, looks like they may win the uh, 
uh, SIAC. Uh, Wingate out of the SAC, uh, 27 to 10 over Newberry. Wingate's four and two in the region. Yeah, Wingate is uh, slowly and, and qui very quietly having a, a very good year and sneaking up there and probably going to be pretty high in the rankings. Um, here's another one out of that conference. Mars Hill, 35 to 28 over Catawba. Mars Hill is 5 and 0 in the region. They are. They're, yeah. they're having an outstanding year again. They play more of their tougher games at the end of the year. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they can finish off. And we got Fort Valley there over Concordia. That was a non Division II game, 38 to 12. Uh, Lenore Ryan, 51. Uh, to beat Tusculum bad. I forgot to put the score down there for Tusculum, but anyway, beat them bad. Lenore Ryan's three and one in the yeah. region. Lenore Ryan, again, you know, it's it's all those teams that, that, that again, in that South, South Atlantic Conference that that uh, normally are kind of in the mid-range, they're in the top now. And of course, no, both VSU and, and North Alabama are three and one. And, and, and I keep saying in the region, in the super region, those are the games that mean the most to the committee, I would think. They do, they mean the most. And uh, you know, it's, a, it's big for us to win that, that North Alabama game and, and put us in position. And uh, you know, hopefully we can continue to win and finish off with, with two more region wins and then beat Kingsville at the end of the year. And Coach uh, Delta State, 33-24 to 24 over West Georgia. West Georgia's lost two in a row, and all of a sudden what, Delta's got Valdosta State, and they start playing better. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, lucky us. You know, they uh, early, struggled early in the year, and now they look like they're playing their best football. So uh, we knew they were going to come in here playing their best, and, and that's what we're going to get for a big game. We'll be back with the Langdale Honda Kia look ahead in just a moment. Welcome to the Langdale Honda Kia Look Ahead and Coach Dean. We talked briefly about Delta State coming to town and just to be truthful for our fans, Delta State has a, a winning streak, I think, of five or six games against Valdosta State. Yeah, yeah it is. It's, uh, it's getting too long to count. Uh, you know, we've, we've been in every single game with those guys. It's, it's been less than a touchdown, I think, almost every time. Uh, we still remember that uh, last year where we had a lead, had a nice drive, and then throw the interception for a touchdown. It kind of changed the game. Uh, it's time we flip that around. Hopefully we're going to be able to do that, playing in front of our home crowd, uh, playing with a little bit of momentum. I think that game yesterday really helped us out a great deal of, of knowing that we can overcome adversity at the end of the game and finish off a game. And again, I can't say enough how, how proud I was of our offensive line, our offense, and the running back, Cedric O'Neill, to run all four minutes off that clock and not give them an opportunity to go back out on the field. That's going to help us. Well, it, it's going to be a, a good weekend because it's homecoming. We have a 3 o'clock kickoff, our only day game of the, of the season at home, uh, hopefully unless we get a playoff game maybe. Uh, but a lot of guys coming back. For, have you heard from any of your former players that are coming back for the weekend? Well, I tell you, we've, we've had a lot that have been in Carrollton. We had a lot in uh, uh, North Alabama yesterday, and I'm sure we'll have a lot that will come back for, for homecoming uh, this week. It's always great to see them. I, I got uh, uh, on the uh, bus or on the plane last night, and the and, uh, first text message that pops up was from Larry Dean and, and he said congratulations coach I really hate those guys at North Alabama so it was good to see him so a lot of folks are still following us it's great to see Larry and, and how well he's doing and how well the Vikings are doing this year but uh, it's always good to see all a lot of former players come back I don't like all of the pageantry that goes along with uh, with homecoming it's tough on our players uh, a lot of distractions that go on but hopefully we'll stay focused and, and knowing that we've got a very tough opponent and what all is at stake, we'll play very well against Delta State. Well, Delta State comes in with a new football coach, uh, I believe. Uh, what have they changed, if anything, over there? They're running very similar offense to North Alabama and West Alabama right now. They're, they're very heavy in the run game. They do spread it out and go to a, to a four wide receiver package and throw the football. Their, their quarterback is a transfer from a 1AA school somewhere in, uh, in Missouri. He's playing very well. He started out the year not throwing the ball very well. Now he's starting to play very well. They're running the ball. They're playing a lot better defensively. They're returning Xavier Triplett, who was the defensive player of the year last year in the Gulf South Conference. He's making a lot of tackles for them. Uh, you know, so I, I think that 
like we talked about, we're hitting them at, at a bad time. They're starting to play their best football. They've, they're on a three-game winning streak, I believe, or maybe a two-game winning streak. Played Abilene Christian, who's one of the top teams in the Lone Star Conference, very tough. Lost to them by, by just a field goal. So uh, it's going to be a heck of a challenge, and, and hopefully we're going to be up for it, having to play three straight redemption games. Well, I would have to say Valdosta State may be playing the best football of their season the last couple of games. Till the fourth quarter yesterday. Till the fourth quarter yesterday. But yeah, I think we are. We're playing very well. And, uh, you know, that's the one thing that we said coming into this year, the West Georgia, North Alabama, and Delta State, we wanted to, to redeem those wins. And we've got two of them. Yeah. Now we need to finish off with that third one. Well, we know it's going to be exciting. A lot going on weekend. We want the football team, as you guys, to keep them focused on what they're supposed to be doing and until Saturday afternoon. So it should be a great weekend. Well, I hope so. We got uh, we got fall break on top of that. So Monday and Tuesday, they, they don't have class. So they can concentrate a little bit more on some film, hopefully. Oh, good for that. Well, good win for Valdosta State on the road. Anytime you win in Florence, Alabama, it's good. Remind you, kickoff for homecoming is 3 o'clock uh, this coming Saturday afternoon. Really encourage you to come out there and have a good crowd for this football team. They're fun, they're exciting to watch. So uh, bring a friend and come on out to Baseball Hydra Stadium. So for the head coach, David Dean, I'm Dick Rocky. I hope you have a great week.